going on everybody? Gunner here and today I want to show you guys I don't have a name for it. I probably will by the time I post this video so the name of whatever I come up with but um, first and foremost uh, it's just like a four inch weedless little uh, kind of jerk fly um, kind of doing like a little shad or something right here um, and I just want to give credit to Samuel Looper. I know that the bugs are very different, but recently he came out with a pattern called the Fur Burger. Um, and that is kind of the silhouette and material choice that I used to come up with this. And it's a really slick pattern. He has um, <clears throat> some weight down here on the shank because he has a lot more materials and he has a little bit more compression. So he has that keeled. And then he has a hidden rattle and some mylar tubing back here, which is really slick. I kind of did a more simplified, uh, easier version than that. And what I ended up using is this head, this reversed craft fur head with UV resin, is something that I first learned from Andreas Anderson. Um, and he's a really, really awesome, super talented tire. He's got a ton of articulated uh, trout streamer designs out, and he ties a boatload of pike flies, and he's a deer hair master. He's all around awesome tire. Um, he doesn't have a lot of, of videos out, but you can follow him on Instagram. He's Andreas13 Anderson. And the videos he does have out, um, they're on Canal Gratis, D O T S E. It's Canal Gratis dot S E for dot Sweden, but they spell the dot, you know what I'm saying? Um, and he has a few tutorials up on there that are definitely worth checking out. So that's where the head comes from. It comes from a pattern he ties called the Craft Fur Baitfish. And this. I mean, this is so similar, I probably don't deserve to tie it, but I think it's cool putting it on this hook, and the tail material that we're going to use, hide the flash, a uh, little ice wing, uh, top flash, and then we're just going to decorate this sucker. So, The hook is a Texas Predator one knot. Now, that hook, we don't have a lot of tying room right here, um, so you got to be careful. We're going to go nice and slow. This pattern is literally, you know, a three minute tie if you were cranking. Um, we're going to do it nice and slow and make sure we get everything perfect. So I'm going to dress this with a hundred uh, denier GSP from Vivas. One of my go to's. I'm going to stop the thread in the middle of this uh, shank that we have so that we have just enough room. To reverse our craft fur. Now the tailing material is a stiffer synthetic. It's um, an EP fiber game changer blend. And the game changer blend is kind of the important part. If you just use an EP fiber, EP fibers are soft and they're um, S crimped and they're way more subtle or supple, which is good. But I want a stiffer tail. I want something that's going to resist following around this back section of the hook point. It's also going to be stiffer here and try to keep this more weedless. Um, and this is what I primarily use for cores on synthetic dubbing brushes. For the record, now I don't use EP, I use the Game Changer Blend for EP. I'm going to take out a decent amount of fibers. That's a lie. Don't take out too much because what we're going to do is we're going to take these fibers and we're going to cut them in half. So at full length, uh, they're about 10 inches, and that right there is already probably too much. I'm going to cut these guys in half. Just kind of use your gut to know what is too much and what is too little, which is hard to convey, so my apologies. Um, and I like that length, so I'm going to take my square end that I just cut, I'm going to put about an inch and a half of taper, so you can see we got a nice taper going into that. Now what you do want to do when you taper materials, pinch on that taper and apply that to the rest of the materials. Because the rest of the most, those materials just kind of got like pulled up and bunched up and they haven't like reset to their full length. So you want to pinch up and drag down so that you apply that taper downward. I'm going to tie this in 3070 like the tail on a mega jerk. Catch that give that some tension. These are two slick materials. It's a slick material with a slick thread so use some good pressure here. Support your hook if you need to. And I'm going to come in with um, some Hedron Flashaboo Accent Flash. This is like a crystal hackle and opal. 
really awesome flash material. I'm going to take maybe five strands. Now I don't need this at full length. So you can measure off your top wing how long it's going to be. That's a little out of, or it's out of frame, but you can use your top wing to measure how long you need to be. Maybe cut it an inch longer because we're going to put a taper into this and then fold that back. So I'm going to tie this in just inside my tail stack. Kind of spread that around with your th thumbnail. I like that to get distributed a little ways there. And you can see tying it in 3070 instead of uh, tying an end straight back, you get twice the core. So we'll have twice the kind of weedlessness because we have this going through and then we're going to drag this over top. It also is going to help build the bulk uh, for the body of your craft fur. So we're going to reverse that back, give that a nice tight little bullet. And that is all the tail is. Now the rest is the head, right? If you see Andreas's pattern, it's a craft fur tail and then he runs up the shank, puts some flash in, and it's a craft fur head. They're super simple, uh, quick ties. I'm going to come in and just kind of taper that uh, tail section a little bit. It's kind of hard because your vise will get in your way. But do what you got to do. I'm going to hit this with some super glue. Actually, we don't need to do that. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to look up the material real quick for you so I get it right. It's Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe in the color Peacock Eye. That is this blue flash material that's on the top of this line. It's on the top of hollow points and, and the gray over white shad color combos. Now this material, when you overdress it, it'll stick together and it'll kind of reduce its effectiveness and movement. So I like to take more off than I need, grab the tips, and preen out all the butts. Now the purpose for that is so I don't have any short fibers, because when I go to reverse this, and you get short fibers up in the head, it's going to get in the way of reversing that through your craft fur, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I'm going to give this a nice loose wrap, keeping that right on top of the hook shank, make sure I have control over that in its position. I want that dead center. Gonna wrap those tail fibers back and cut those off of there. Don't need that. Now we're gonna come in with gray, it might be done gray, I don't remember. Gray craft fur on top, and we're gonna do white craft fur on the bottom, and that is it. That's how simple this fly is. Now again, just like with that ice dub shimmer friends, I'm going to grab more than I need because we're going to pull out all the short fibers that are going to get in the way of reversing this to make our uh, UV resin head far simpler to tie. So we print out all those short fibers. This is a little dense. You can just kind of grab up and pull those out if you don't have a comb. That works equally as well. And then I'm just going to pinch this, catch that with a nice loose wrap. What that loose wrap does is it, it kind of momentarily takes the thread torque out of your thread because you come down uh, uniformly on top of that material and it helps keep it directly on top. I'm also holding that material kind of on my side by a fraction, if you can imagine. It's not directly on top because I know as soon as I get that down and cinch down, it's going to rotate up a little bit. So that's one of the techniques that you kind of want to use to keep that directly on top so you get a really nice clean seam um, from your craft fur when we, re when we reverse this. So coming in with white craft fur on the bottom, going to use the exact same technique that I did on the top. I just drop that craft fur and that's going to be not good. Bear with me here, I'm about 10% too short on my fibers. Again, printing these out. Um, yeah. So one thing that we're going to do differently is, in the past I've reversed heads with um, 
Well, I'm going to use the same UV resin, but previously, especially in my hollow point tutorial, I use a gel super glue to secure the eyes, which is something that I don't always do anymore. Um, we're going to use tear mender on the craft fur. Now it's a little tricky. If you're not comfortable with it, that's totally cool. The super glue is fairly uh, durable. The craft fur is or the tear mender is a little bit more durable, which is why I'm going to use it. Um, and it it dries just rock hard. It's like cement when that stuff dries, and it makes a really durable head. So I'm going to use tear mender on this craft fur, and it's a little tricky. So I'll walk you through it. I got this tied down. I'm going to comb it out. Take a comb, not a comb, an open pen cap. So we just took a pen out from. The little pen holder. I prefer Bic. Brick has the best brand in my opinion. Get these at, you know, Office Max or something. Great place to pick up fly tying material. Great place. So, you use that pen cap and I'm just dragging that material up and back and I'm holding that really, really tight. And what I want, come around, I want to pinch these fibers vertically because I want to increase the surface area for which my eye is going to be able to adhere on. I don't want that to be super round when I go applying my tear mender because it's going to be a mess. You want to keep that nice and vertical and pull those fibers, if you can, it's a little tricky, straight back. And what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a little hair clip on top of this back section of hook temporarily hold those materials in place which works better than you think so we have this nice clean color separation I'm gonna come in with eight millimeter Deer Creek eyes in the color volcano and I'm just I'm sticking to the color combos that I, I came up with uh, for the original post because you guys really seem to respond to that and I'm gonna saturate this with this tear mender and right now I have this tear mender in a loon applicator bottle um, seems to kind of be the most mess free and it gives you a precision tip to apply that. And I'm just going to let that soak down all the way to the core. Try to keep it uh, as close to the hook eye as you can because it really likes to saturate back into the fly um, with this craft fur which is it's kind of loose and up from the shank. Um, so it's harder to work with than say doing it on dubbing. I want that yellow back. So I'm going to take my eye, I'm just going to rest this right on top of that tear mender, tap that down towards the hook eye, and we'll hit the other side. Now that I got both my eyes on there, make sure I don't have any stray fibers kind of in the way. I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and really gently because you don't want to add too much pressure or those eyes will kind of slip out of place and we're just going to rest come on oh yeah just going to rest that on there while that tear mender sets up and you'll see because that tear mender got saturated up into the craft fur fibers, it'll help control this top taper and bottom taper. So it's much more manageable when you come in with the UV to control all the fibers. Um, but this takes, I probably let this set up for about five minutes. So uh, it's a good place to take a little break here and then we'll come in and finish the head and talk about some stuff. Anyway, now she's got a name, the Seeker. So I'm just, I came in here and I kind of plucked out any of the loose craft fur fibers that were kind of annoying me. <laughs> and I'm going to come in with some UV uh, Diamond Fine Flex from Deer Creek. And I'm just going to hit the top and bottom of this and then we'll do a small coating over the eyes. So something that's really cool about this fly is obviously uh, everything is protected and tied within this head, which is now saturated with tear mender and coated with UV. Um, so talk about an extremely durable fly. Um, 
you know, all your materials are tied in and protected on this one joint. Now I am going to give this a nice uh, vertical head, trying to keep that pressed together and squished so that when it does kind of jig, because this has quite a lot of, uh, the hook has a lot of front weight towards the eye, so it tends to dip head first down in the water, and because we're going to put some UV resin up front, it's going to have a little bit more weight up there. Um, so that should make sense, right? So that head's going to dive down, and because we have this little bit of verticalness, all of the action and all of the height is given by these eyes, those eyes are allowed to dip, dip down and catch currents and kind of flick up and down and have, it's kind of like a jerk series fly, uh, like a keeled jerk. Maybe that'd be a good name. The Seeker or the Keeled Jerk, I don't know. Who knows what I'll say. Who knows. But I'm coating this, I like to coat this all the way back to the bend there. And again, I'm going to pull on those fibers. Cure that real quick. I need a third hand. I want to pinch that eye in there. Now this fly has a little uh, post-production to it, if you will. We're going to put a little gill line on here. And we're also going to do a little uh, kind of shed. Um, hot spot on it um, and that's just done I use a chart pack for the little shad spot I'm gonna use a sharpie for the little gills um, none of that's really important so the fly is basically done at this point um, so yeah the last step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a drop of UV resin on top of the eyeball and this is the easiest way I have found to do this you put a drop right on top you take a bodkin and you draw it off to the sides, touching the craft fur just enough so that we have a really durable head. And what you're doing is you're protecting the edges of those eyes so that a tooth can't hit the edge and kind of lift that eye up. That's what that's about. I'm just going to tap that shad spot on here with this chart pack and something that I like to do is if you can saturate that through to the, the kind of core of that material what will happen is when that material breathes you'll be able to see through it to the other side of the spot and that spot becomes almost dimensionless it's really uh, it has a cool effect to it it's not just on the surface you want that marker to bleed a little bit deeper and it gives that uh, just a different kind of texture to it and then I'm just going to tap a little gill on here. Super simple, just kind of contour the eye. So earlier in this spring, this is my last story for you, I tried stacking um, some SF, some Steve Farrar flash bend flies, on uh, these hooks in a 3 up. And what I ended up doing is I ended up stacking those flies on this part of the shank, the lower part of the shank. Wherever you stack your material, that is where the fly is going to displace water. And that is where the fly um, is it's basically what's going to become the pivot point for that fly. So when you stack flies on a keel hook like this, on this bottom part, now you have, I should get a, a bare hook because that will make more sense. Give me a second because this is probably an important topic. And I'm going to use the 3 out because it's a little bit bigger and you should be able to visualize it easier. <clears throat> so here's the 3 out uh, Texas, right? And one of the things that will happen is right now we have all of our materials tied at the hook eye. Now that becomes your pivot point, right? And you have all of this mass, you have all this hook as your keel weight. So right now this fly is going to keel, there's nothing, I don't have to worry about any of that. You put that in still water, slow water, it's going to hold its shape, it's going to be nice and uh, vertically displaced and nice and thin, right? Well as soon as you stack a bug on this part, you have now displaced the water in a way that this rotation becomes your pivot point and you have all this material above that rotation point, right? And these are moment forces which want to torque that to the side and your fly will begin to twist and wobble as soon as you start stacking on this bottom shank. Now you can obviously uh, add weight down to the lower part 
um, to kind of help kill that and you can obviously stack more materials on top than on bottom to displace more water to help stabilize that. Um, and it's not that those flies don't fish, they still catch a ton of fish, they work very e effectively. Um, they just don't, I don't know, it's not uh, intuitive unless you take it out and you see what it does. So I want this to be nice and keeled, weedless, I don't want it to roll over. I want a little bit of belly wobble, right? But um, just be careful, as soon as you change your orientation and your water displacement, that's going to want to flip upside down because you've changed. Uh, you see how much of that hook is now above that tie-in point versus here you can see how much of that hook is below the tie-in point. That's just what I'm trying to tell you. So that's why it's all stacked up on the hook eye so that we can utilize that hook and we don't have to add any weight to it to make it keel because I like light weighted weightless flies. So that's the seeker or maybe it's the keeled jerk. I don't know what I'll call it but thanks for watching. Hopefully you like that. Tie some up and fish them. And again, thanks to Sam, Samuel Looper from Looper's Flies for uh, the Fur Burger inspiration and Andreas Anderson's Craft for Bait Fish. And uh, cheers. See ya.